Hello, today we are going to learn coordinate geometry in our GRE geometry classes. Let's see what is coordinate geometry. It's also called the analytic geometry or the Cartesian geometry. We will not go into detail in all these things. But first thing, the thing which we have to learn here is that coordinate geometry deals with points in a two-dimensional plane in planes x and y axis so here the horizontal axis is the x axis and the vertical axis is the y axis so points for example let's say this is a point if we look at this point in terms of x coordinates it is here that is one two three so the value of x here is three and the value of y here is also 3. So this point is located at 3 to 3. And then it can be another point here. For example, if you look at this, the x coordinate here is minus 4, whereas the y coordinate is 2. So this point is minus 4, 2. This point might be called this point A, this point might be called as point B. Then different relationships between these points are explored in coordinate geometry. Then there is a three dimensional coordinate axis also in which there is z axis but it is out of the scope of GRE. Now in coordinate axis here is one point A 2 2 another point is as you can see here 6 4 because the x-axis is 6 and the y-axis is 4 and now at the center this is known as origin 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 is always at 0 0 okay now we do the first formula that is the distance formula the distance formula if we have to find out the distance between two points again they are the same points a is at 2 2 and y is at 6 4 if we have to find out the distance we can find out the distance by graphically measuring it accurately or we can just use this formula so the formula is the distance from a to b equals the difference between the x-axis of the two points so here if we see x1 is this 2 whereas x2 is this 6 so the difference is 2 minus 6 we can also take 6 minus 2 it doesn't matter because it's to be squared then y1 this is y1 and this is y2 the difference between the two that is 2 minus 4 as I said earlier it can be 4 minus 2 also and then square root the whole thing so you're getting minus 4 squared plus minus 2 squared square root gives you 16 and this gives you 4 so it is 20 square root square root of 20 and this 20 equals 4 times 5 so this can also be written as 2 root 5 that is the distance between these two points that's how we use the distance formula then if you want to find out the midpoint between these two points so there are again those two points a 2 2 b 6 4 and this m let's assume it is at the midpoint is the midpoint of these two points so this is how we calculate this so the midpoint in this case will be let's say it is x m and uh, y m it's the sum of the x coordinates of both points so here it will be 2 plus 6 divided by 2 so we are taking the average the other one again 2 plus 4 by 2 it comes out to be 8 over 2 6 over 2 that is 4 and 3 that's the midpoint 
the coordinates of the midpoint and if we look here we can see yes x is 4 and y is 3 so the coordinates of the midpoint are 4 and 3 next thing the slope what's the slope slope is the rise that is the x-axis as we move along the x-axis the the rise in, uh, in y-axis as we move along the x-axis so if here we can see as we go two units here it moves one unit up two units here one unit up I just found out mathematically this is the formula so slope also denoted by m normally that's the difference between the y coordinates of the two points so here is y2 minus y1 that is this 4 minus this 2 divided by x2 minus x1 so it is 6 minus 2 so we have 2 over 4 that's equal to half so the slope of this line is half it means for every one unit movement from x in the x direction we move half a unit in the y direction now how to calc how to find out the equation of the line this is known as the slope intercept form there are many others also slope intercept form y equals mx plus c and because the line points are same so we already know what's the slope here slope is half let's formulate this equation so for these x uh, y and x is we can just use any of these two points let's say we use the first point 2 2 so we say 2 that is y here equals half that's the slope times x which is again 2 plus c this constant we don't know at the moment so if we simplify this so this is 2 1 plus c which means c comes out to be 1 if we sub in this value of c in y equals mx plus c so we'll have y equals half x plus 1 that is the equation of this line which can also be simplified as 2y equals x plus 2 the slope intercept form is this by just looking at this equation you can find out what's the slope and what's the intercept see if we had done this in the previous slide so this is your slope and this one is your y intercept that's why it's known as a slope intercept form now how does it work here let's see see if this line the previous line is extended to cross the y-axis the point when it crosses the y-axis is known as the y-intercept and we can see it's one here so y equals one here and this is one so the slope intercept form tells you what's the slope of the line and where it will intersect at on the y-axis now coming to parallel lines let's have there's a parallel line this is a line a b and there's another line which is parallel to it that is c d what's the relationship between the slopes of these two lines this is the relationship let's test that it's true or not so m1 is the slope between these two lines that is y2 minus y1 so that is 4 minus 2 divided by x2 minus x1 that is 6 minus minus 4 
and it comes out to be 2 over 10 or 1 over 5 that's the slope of the first line if we try to find out the slope of the another line so we let use points C and D and here x2 minus y2 minus y1 will be minus 2 minus minus 4 divided by 5 minus minus 5 and if you look at this this is also going to be 2 by 10 or 1 over 5 so we can see that the slope of these slopes of these two lines are equal to each other with the help of this we can solve some problems in which something is missing and we are told that the lines are parallel so by knowing by calculating the slope of one line we can use it for another one similarly in case of perpendicular lines if the lines are perpendicular so here we have a line m1 for the line cd and we have already calculated the slope of this line so the slope was 1 over 5 and let's calculate the slope of another line m2 for line ab here so x y1 y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 gives you minus 5 over 1 that is minus 5 now if you look at this here m1 and m2 are in this relationship okay the signs are changed and it is flipped this shows that these two lines are perpendicular if this is the case then the lines are perpendicular or if it is already given to us that the lines are perpendicular then we know the slopes have this relationship okay that's all for today let's have a summary of whatever we learned this is the distance formula finding out the distance between two points a and b if the coordinates of a are x1 x2 and the coordinate x1 y1 and those of point b are x2 y2 so that's how we find the distance between these two lines and the midpoint formula find out the dis finds out the distance between two points uh, distance between two points and the midpoint so this formula is used for finding out the midpoint slope test the slope how much is the rise for every unit movement in x then how an equation is formed this is one of the formulas used it's known as the slope intercept formula this is the slope and this is the intercept slope and intercept then if two lines are parallel what happens what's the relationship between their slopes and if two lines are perpendicular then what's the intercept what's the relationship between their slopes okay see you in the next video thank you